is your captain. Welcome to flying solo. Jared Poland, Frono's photo. Dot com and welcome back to another flying solo. Look, there's three dots. Three dots or stars mean I answer three of your questions. So let's see who it's sponsored by this week. This week it's sponsored by my Gear Vault input, organize and protect. The best way to know what you have and what it's worth. Head on over to mygearvault.com right now to download it for free for iOS or Android. First question, we've got Keenan Woodmancy. Yep, Keenan Woodmancy. Woody here in South Korea. Been thinking about the A7R3 and using my Canon glass. It's got the 16 to 35 to 8, 24 to 70 to 8, 70 to 200 2.8, 51.4, 85 1.8. Holy God, you're loaded. 40 millimeter 2.8 and the 5D Mark III. Would I lose any functionality on the Sony using my Canon glass? Thanks. See ya. So this is one of those things that people keep asking about going to Sony. They love being able to adapt their Canon glass to use on the Sony cameras. Now you will lose some functionality when it comes to the autofocus. Now things like the Metabones adapter have gotten better and better when each generation has come out, which is starting to allow you to get better uh, autofocus capabilities using some of the, the IAF as well. I personally wouldn't want to adapt my lenses from one system to the other because natively they're going to be much better. I want my Nikon glass on my Nikon cameras. I want my, so, uh, my Sony glass on the Sony cameras and the Canon glass on the Canon cameras. Now, if you're going to be doing video and doing that manually focused, then all day long use the adapter, put that Canon glass on the Sony, and it should should work perfectly fine there and you may even still get some functionality that works well for your needs when you are doing autofocus for video. But I, I, I suspect that at some point Canon is going to come out with their own mirrorless full frame camera. They already have the M5 and with the M5 they already have an adapter to take the full frame lenses, put it on that body and make it work. In the real world review that we did with that camera, when you put the adapter on and you put a 70 to 200 2.8 on on the end of it, it just works super easy, natively makes it great right out of the box. So maybe Sony or maybe Canon will be doing that with a full frame body and you won't need to worry about that and jump ship to Sony just to get an adapter and then lose functionality that you don't want to lose. Moving on to the next one, we've got Philip Wood. I would love to see a video on getting the best of candid portraits. I try to get the real emotions of people and I can't seem to nail it all the time. Spur of the moment shots. So the, the, there's, I was almost going to say the secret, but one of the things that I look for when I'm working with subjects to capture candids is anticipating the action. What is going to happen next? You may not always know exactly what's going to happen next, but you can get a feeling for, oh, their makeup is done and they're sitting in the chair and that means they're about to walk to the stage or on set to get filming. Well, then in your mind you're thinking, well, you know, they've been sitting here a while. They're going to be standing up shortly to take a walk. Prepare the lens that you need. Make sure that your shutter speed is going to be fast enough for getting them walking to set or wherever they need to go and then be prepared to capture that. So you need to pre-visualize what you're trying to capture or what you want to capture and hopefully that's what comes up next. You just need to feel it out and try to think about what's going to happen and then be prepared and ready before it happens. I like to think when I go into situations that I see the images before they're going to happen so that when they do flash in front of my face in the real world that I'm already ready to capture it because I've seen it in my mind. That to me just comes from a lot of practice and shooting over the years because I've had a, a really good practice doing that capturing the candids. Another thing you can do is slightly direct your subject. If something happened or they you saw a great angle of the writer who's who's sitting there with their guitar and they've got the, the pad of paper and a pen with notes on it and they slightly moved a different way to do something different. I have no problem with saying to the subject, could you hold that? Or could you move back this way or just look at me? Uh, that's, I'm okay with that when it comes to those candidates because they're focused in on their world which is perfectly fine and sometimes you see the shot and you need to get it or you want to get it and you and you missed it because of it just moves so fast you can be like you know what 
Could you hold that real fast, get the picture and say thank you, I got it, and then move on. I personally have no problem doing that. It doesn't work in every situation, but when you're intimate with the subject that you're with in an intimate situation and you can have the ability to do that. I mean, if it's somebody that you've never worked with, actually, it's funny, there was this guy, Charlie Walk, who's on the show The Four. I've never worked with him before, and I was thrown right into working with him when he was having makeup done. He had a makeup artist, he had a hairstylist, he had a producer from the show. All three are talking to him, and all focused on him, looking at him, getting all this stuff done. And I said, Charlie, just you, could you give me your eyes straight to my camera? And that photo looks tremendous. It just worked out so well because he's looking at me and everything else is just gone because I got the eyes. And then I moved on from there. I just knew the eyes would make a better shot, so I asked for it and it made it work. So that's what I have to say about that one. Let's move on to the next. We've got Leah Jones. How would you go about marketing and publishing your personal project as a book? So I alluded to that with the Charlie Walk photo shoot that I did as part of a Six Degrees project. How would I go about marketing it? Well, I have the ability to, through my channel, to reach a lot of people. I would start to make teaser trailers, putting out the images, explaining how these were shot and how I did this and how I would do this or, or some stories or anecdotes from the people that I was photographing. And this would all lead up to the release or pre-sale of a book. A Kickstarter could be another option, whether you have a following or you don't. But keep in mind, if you're going to want to promote something or you're going to want to sell something, it was told to me a long time ago when I said I wanted to do this project a decade ago and that I wanted to make a book and then people would buy it. And my friend said, who's going to buy it? I was like, I don't know, people. And I wanted to rely on the publisher, but that's backwards these days. The way to do it is you have a, a, a bunch of people waiting for whatever you put out. You build the following. You can start there. Remember, I started with zero and worked my way up. And so I would either go to Kickstarter and have special offers like pre-order the book, get a couple of signed prints, or do a portfolio book that comes if you spend X amount of dollars. Not only will you get this book as well as these prints. So that's what starts to, to, to go through my mind. Would I reach out to a publisher to do it? At this point, probably not, because the publisher's really just fronting some of the money and or uh, giving you some kind of distribution into the traditional channels unless you're the biggest of the big and you can and and you can you need that and they're paying you a ton of money up front as an advance it's probably maybe not worth it today if you have a following because you can take the risk on yourself and offer it to your followers and then sell it that way. So those would be the steps that I would personally take if I wanted to make a book for this personal project. I'd also put together having a, uh, a gallery showing somewhere where I have the gallery, I have some books, and you sell those prints and you make some extra money off of that stuff if you can as fine art stuff. And that's the process that I would go through for that. So it looks like those are the three questions for this flying solo. If you'd like to submit your flying solo questions, go to bit.ly slash fro critiques to do so. And if you guys have your responses to the answers that I gave on, or the questions that I answered on this show, leave them down below in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys think to any of the episodes that I've put out. What do you think about the questions? Did I answer them right? Or how would you go ahead and answer them? Because there is no right answer, except for when I give it. It's not always true. Don't hold that. No, don't, don't get upset. Don't hit the thumbs down. Hit the thumbs up. And that's where I'm going to leave it this time. Jared Poland Fro knows photo.com. See ya. Don't forget to go to bit.ly.com slash, or no, no, not bit.ly.com. Go to bit.ly slash fro critiques to submit your questions. Click up on the screen right now to check out the last flying solo or this other video over here, which I know is tremendously amazing. You could look at this one too. They're good. Or click them both right now and let them both play. But do something. Thanks.